junk number one. Don't <laughs> be a fuzzy. <laughs> Why it, my cough crack? I don't know. It's like a circulation thing. There it is. So my husband Tom and his crazy friend Kona had this idea to run around the entirety of the island of Oahu. They decided they wanted to leave first thing in the morning and Tom thought it'd be a good idea to do one last ditch ice bath before they embarked on this 150 mile journey to run around the entirety of the island. After our ice bath and the inflammation was gone, we headed over to Kona's house to try and game plan a little bit as they were leaving in just over 10 hours and hadn't done any planning whatsoever. Who are you and what are you doing? Kona, go. Crazy one, crazy two. We are running around Wahoo. Tomorrow's the day. In 24 hours. No. <laughs> I'm scared. We're doing it tomorrow, ready or not. It's a super slow pace, so we're running like a 10 minute mile pace and Blake's is going to bring the water and food supplies at a few different stops for us. It's going to be cool in from here. Yeah, I think we should leave from right out there. 5 a.m. will probably put us at kind of point 8 a.m. And then it might just be a hot like west side run. Oh. It's the longest run you've ever had. Half marathon. It's 13.1 miles. So you're going to multiply that by 10 tomorrow. <laughs> at a slow pace. That's so, what I'm telling myself. Easy. I thought I was, had some crazy wait. run challenge. <laughs> this guy straight to the top. So there you have it. Our insanely absurd adventure was set in stone and we were ready to take off from the pipe car park tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We had a great cause to get behind this run and we were both feeling very eager for the adventure and challenges that may lay ahead. Seeing how organised Kona is has made me feel very relaxed. Got my little baggie here of all the goods, gels, bars, powders. I think my parents wanted to come out and just say hi, and they bring us an ice bath for the end of the day. Yeah. We ready? Ready, <laughs> mom. You're looking ready. better that Kona's with him to be honest. Yeah. Kona was a little bit more prepared in the food department which is going to be the in my opinion I think that's the whole key is just like having enough hydration of food. Vibes are high. We'll see in about 24 hours how they're feeling but. Feeling strong? Feeling strong. What are you feeling the most at the moment? The brain is just rattling this walk. <laughs> We've gone miles farther than we planned. And we planned to go a mile. Uh, last minute call, yeah. Oh, last minute. They told us last night at 8 o'clock.
There's some kind of thrill and exhilaration you experience when starting an adventure this crazy. While this may only be short-lived and often deteriorates once the pain starts to set in, it's a pretty special and amazing feeling to be able to experience with a group of mates. He just sent me a video of you guys. How's Koa doing? Is he alive back there? Koa's alive. He's with us. Yes, Koa. He's so great. Freaking machine. Okay. All right, love you. Right. How far in are they? That's good. They're alive. He didn't tell yeah. me. I'm guessing they're almost to 15 miles. They're almost to the big point out there. That's where they're almost to there. I'm meeting them around on the other side of that point, which apparently is the hardest part of the whole run. And it's going to be really hot today over there. So. so let's talk about running. Running has been around since the start of mankind. It is thought that we were given the ability to run these long distances to capture our food or animals. However, with modern day conveniences, we no longer have to chase a gazelle 40 kilometers across the plains to be able to put a meal on our plate. So my question to you is why do we still run? Maybe it's the runner's high, maybe we're just a bunch of idiots. But I'm going to try and answer this at the end of this 135 miles. Fucking Kona going strong, Kyle feeling like a gazelle, trotting on. I come straight to you. Oh, the river's wide, and the you going for the record? Big uh, water refill for the boys. So strong. Really? <laughs> 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 you think so, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> we are 17 kilometers in. Probably take the night light off now, kind of. We're nearly down to 200 kilometers to go, so we'll keep on trekking. <laughs> you going too fast, Kona? They're coming to get you, mate. All right, we've just hit our first half marathon, so we're officially one tenth of the way through. I'd say the last kilometer or two, the legs have started to seize up a little more. Um, this <laughs> I've never gone this far, so this is the furthest I've gone. Toe is still, still trekking. His little back still soldiering on. Still trekking. Medical, uh, quick medical stop for Kona. Tape up with the toes. Uh. <laughs> All right, so we're having a competition. By the time we finish the 220 kilometers tomorrow, who finds the coolest thing by the side of the road? Kona just found a really cool mini tennis ball. Runner fall folks. So he's currently definitely got the lead. The beauty of Kana Point was almost enough to block the cascade of pain developing in our lower limbs. It honestly looked like a scene from Jurassic Park. The Hawaiians believe that Kiana Point is the leaping place of souls, and that when you die, this is where your soul goes into the next existence. It definitely felt special and you could feel that there was a different energy as you ran around the point here. Let's go to scale the cliff here, yeah? And just like that, with one simple turn left, we were on the west coast of Oahu. In a matter of two minutes, it felt like someone had turned the dial up 20 degrees and we had walked into a steam sauna. The old analogy of hitting the wall was vastly starting to become present and I soon got a clear picture of what today had in store for me. Okay, so I found, don't smoke, don't vape, but I found a vape. So Kona's got his ball, I've got my vape. We don't know what Koa's found yet, but maybe we'll let you guys vote. You got the coolest. Oh, you got a vape. I got a vape. I could provide energy along the way. <laughs> <laughs>
His lips have been on that, I don't know, but. We're uh, walking for a few kilometers without shoes. Number one, because my quad started to freaking spasm. And uh, dry our feet out a little bit, stop the blistering. We are 34 miles in, so we're over a quarter way, which is exciting. My body's falling apart a little quicker than Kona's. Quad crank cramping thing going on. Now like an old man, but running this far will we'll do it to you. Oh! When the traffic's bad on the island, it's actually faster sometimes just to run. As this day progressed, I made several rookie mistakes. But my biggest of all was the lack of water and salt intake. Yes, salt. Who would have thought salt was such a crucial role in any endurance event? Well, it is, and if you don't have enough, you cramp pretty severely which for those who have experienced severe cramping, it ain't pretty. Although I can try and blame it all on the salt, I do think it comes down to a lack of training as well and just not being prepared. We stopped a few times, tried to stretch and get the cramps to release and they did for two or three kilometers, but then they would come back a little stronger and leave me bent over at the side of the road, almost in tears. All right, so. I've been cramping up like crazy, so Kona is gonna take off. This is our last little goodbye. This is the last goodbye. We'll see where we end up. Uh, we're running <laughs> with the cramps going through the body. So is quad. Number one thing you've learned? I've learned that the west side of Oahu, middle of the day, is very hot. Bye, my friend. Yeah, hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, Costco! If you don't want like, I need new pair of legs. Costco seem to have everything, so maybe I'll go and do some shopping. Update, I am, I don't know where I am, and I can't feel my legs. I can feel the cramping on the bottom of my feet. Quad cramping kind of stopped, but I've had to like really slow the pace off. I'll go in on, on into the night. My goal tonight is to try and get to the halfway mark. At this point of the run, my over-optimistic mind was completely and utterly blinded to the physical appearance my body was in. To paint you guys a picture, if you could imagine the hunchback of Notre Dame trying to run up Mount Everest, this is exactly what I would have looked like to the average bypasser. I'm laying here on a park bench. I'm going to have to pull the pin. I think where I went wrong is my hydration. I wasn't on it early enough and then on the west side it was like in the sun, 35 degrees and I just got a little too dehydrated. As soon as you get dehydrated when you are doing this sort of stuff you cramp really quickly. Once you start to cramp you can't really reverse it so yeah it sucks. I uh, threw up a few times. You know actually train two runs in the past month really doesn't cut it. Kona I hope He's still running, so I really hope he makes it. I'll be able to cheer him on. And just like that, I was forced to tap out. My body didn't want to play any more ball and had seized up to the point I could barely walk. I went on home with a big dent in my ego, my tail between my legs, and an extremely broken and sore body. I'm gonna go and meet Kona now. He's just past the halfway mark, and he seems, I just spoke to him on the phone, he's in really good spirits. Kinda of works somehow. Hello everyone, my name is Dylan. Um, I'm an ultra marathon runner. It's hard and you really need like good people around you and you know when you do things like this with a good cause, um, with like supporting lifeguards, you, you find a lot of good people who want to help you out. 44 hours after starting, the studly Greek god stallion of a human being, Kona Johnson, made the finish line. Although he had blisters and sore feet, his physical structure was perfectly intact. Thank you all for watching and comment below what you think our next adventure should be, land or sea.